This is the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis Health Systems. And welcome back into our East Texas Big Game Tailgate Special. I'm Judd Baker. We're outside of our studios here on the South Loop in Tyler. We got a lot lined up for you on this uh, Sunday morning. I almost said it was Saturday, taking us back in time here. We're going to have uh, some great food uh, that uh, Walk On's restaurant is going to be in, uh, giving us some appetizer ideas on what they're going to be serving up today. Plus, we got Beer Creek Smokehouse with us this morning, giving us some ideas and tips of what you could be doing this afternoon as you prepare for the big game. But first, we're going to check in on our headlines. We'll send it inside with Raina Revel to get a peek at what's happening around your world this morning, Raina. Well, good morning, Judd. I'm looking forward to joining you out there in just a few minutes. But first, here's a quick look at some of our top stories. Canada's Prime Minister says a U.S. fighter jet shot down an unidentified object Saturday over northern Canada. Trudeau says Canadian and U.S. aircrafts were scrambled and that when he spoke with President Joe Biden about that episode, the latest object comes after the U.S. military shot down a high-flying object over Alaska on Friday and five people were injured at LAX airport Friday night when a plane that was being towed from a gate collided with a shuttle bus. Officials say the American Airlines aircraft was being moved to a remote parking location when an airfield bus pulled in front of a plane colliding with a tug. And the death toll in Turkey is more than 28,000, and now the living left not only with grief, but trying to cope with a shortage of shelter, food, and supplies. Saturday, some 37 tons of medical supplies reached Syria as the chief of the World Health Organization toured hard-hit Aleppo. Now this morning, yet another disaster is unfolding after the aftermath of the tremors leaving the region shaken. That's a look at your top stories for this Sunday morning. And okay, Andrew, I know a lot of people are probably heading out to church right now, but what can we expect for today's forecast along with the big game that we're celebrating? All right, Raina. So first we'll start by taking a look at the forecast for Glendale, Arizona, where Super Bowl 57 will be located. Again, this is the forecast for Arizona. This is not for East Texas. We'll get to East Texas in just a few minutes here, but Five o'clock this evening in Glendale, 71 of the temperature with lots of sunshine, but clouds will increase throughout the evening hours by seven o'clock. It's in the low 60s and then down into the mid 50s by your nine o'clock hour. Uh, notice temperatures drop off pretty quickly. That's not because of any cold front when you uh, are in that more desert climate. Temperatures drop very quickly after the sun sets because of how dry the air is uh, over there. As we take a look at temperatures around the United States, we're down to 49 over into Phoenix this morning. It's a bit warmer over in Glendale. Glendale. Again, a lot of geographical differences in that part of Arizona. So uh, Phoenix, for example, is typically colder uh, than Glendale uh, during this time of the year, even though the, the cities are right next to each other. But let's take a look farther to the east. We have those temperatures in the 20s and 30s for places like Lubbock and Oklahoma City. We're in the mid 30s here in Tyler. We'll zoom in closer to our region now. Middle and upper 30s across the Arklatex. If you're heading over to DFW, perhaps for a uh, Super Bowl party, the weather's looking pretty good over there as well. Off to a cold start down to 31 right now in Waco down to 43 the temperature into Houston taking a look at Tyler with our sky view camera brought to you by cables roofing we are seeing mostly clear skies out there temperature now up to 34 degrees with a dew point of 32 so it is a uh, chilly start to our day today there may be some frost on your vehicle's windshield so keep that in mind as you head out the door this morning taking a look at what future cast has as we head throughout your day today eight o'clock this morning again temperatures in those 30s and maybe a few few 40s out there. I think future cast may be a little bit too warm for the morning hours, but by 10 o'clock this morning, we should be in the upper 40s to lower 50s. We'll see some passing clouds out there as well, and that will be the case as we head throughout the day today. Temperature is climbing into the 60s by 1 o'clock this afternoon with a mix of clouds and sunshine, and that will continue as we head throughout our uh, day today. By 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we are in a two of those lower 60s out there. So overall, a pleasant day is in store for us across East Texas. If you have any plans to go tailgating uh, this afternoon, the weather's looking good. If you plan to go to church this morning, weather's looking good as well. Just make sure to bundle up and leave some extra time to get that frost off your windshield. I'll have more details of what we can expect coming up in a few more minutes. Judd and Raina. 
Andrew, thank you very much. Well, tonight, more than 70,000 people will be watching the big game. That's right, and history is going to be made, not just on the field, but up in the sky. Here's our Andrew Martin. Like the halftime show and expensive commercials, the pregame flyover is a tradition on Super Bowl Sunday. It takes place right after the national anthem, and it only lasts 10 to 12 seconds, so don't blink. This year's flyover is honoring 50 years of women flying in the Navy. They're known as the Flying Eagles, which is fitting because the Eagles are one of the teams in Super Bowl 57. You get to see the world from such a, an interesting perspective. Naval Lieutenants Ariel Ash and Katie Martinez are part of their own team headed to Super Bowl 57. Based at Naval Air Station Lemoore in California, on Sunday, they'll fly out of Luke Air Force Base in Arizona to be above State Farm Stadium just before kickoff. I am absolutely very excited. Uh, it, there is nervous excitement there, but not in the sense that anything's, you know, not going to go to plan. Uh, you want to do it right. You want to be on time, on target. You want it to look good. Uh, so it's all of that combined. It, the flying piece of it is the simplest aspect. Flying faster than the speed of sound. These women will be in F-18s. They'll likely be part of a diamond formation, four aircraft total, and they'll be flying to honor their predecessors in the Navy. In 1973, 50 years ago, the first eight women began flight school in Pensacola, Florida. I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. I mean, these women paved such an important path for all of us that are able to be here today. I'm an aviator because I earn my wings just like anyone else. So I'm proud to do it with my friends on the field who happen to be female. Did you know the first military flyover at a Super Bowl was in 1968? Super Bowl II, the Orange Bowl in Miami. By the way, Lieutenant Katie Martinez is a Denver Broncos fan. Lieutenant Ariel Ash, she went to Texas Tech. She's a Patrick Mahomes fan. In Glendale, Arizona at Super Bowl 57, I'm Andrew Martin. Well, road preps have begun in Arizona. Glendale city officials have put out barriers and closed off several streets. Rideshare usage is expected to increase, and the city officials say they will encourage public transportation for fans in an effort to ease that congestion. Thousands are expected to travel to Arizona from out of state, including these loyal Chiefs fans. Bucket list. So. I've always wanted to go to Super Bowl. I've always wanted to see the halftime show. And Ed decided that this might be our only chance. And he said, if we want to go to a Super Bowl, we should go when the Chiefs are in it. And the city of Glendale is also working to put a designated pickup and drop off location near the stadium for fans headed to take part in the big game. And two black quarterbacks are set to face off for the first time in the Super Bowl. And Fox 51's Ashlyn Anderson visited a special exhibit in East Texas, taking us inside. NFL quarterback position is the most important one on a football team. A personal collection by Rodney Atkins, housed in the library of Jarvis Christian University, holds many pieces of black sports history. Wheaties edition that I do not have, I purchase it. There is a history uh, through the years, for some reason, they tried to pose the question whether or not a black quarterback could take not only command of a team, but be able to read the defense as well as follow the offensive scheme. QBs are leaders on and off the field, starting with the first black quarterback, Doug Williams, to win a Super Bowl leading up to this historic year with Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts facing off at the highest level. Destiny throughout the years, throughout the trials, throughout all the setbacks, that this was meant to happen in this hour. Both men, Texas made is a testament to the talent in the Lone Star State, with one of our own from Beast, Texas. He is a black quarterback, but let's just look at it this way. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback 
in the whole wide world. Black players have a long history of discrimination in the NFL. That hasn't stopped barriers from being broken by the men on this wall and in games history. So this means a lot for the African American community. We always told you that we were able to do the things that we we'll do and we are proving it to the whole world. Whether Mahomes comes out on top or Hurts takes the win, either way history will be made on the field this Sunday. Well, if Patrick Mahomes wins, he will be the first black NFL quarterback to win the Super Bowl twice. And if Hertz wins, he will be the fourth quarterback, black quarterback to win the big game. All righty, Judd. Well, coming up next on Fox 51, we will have Bear Creek joining us this morning. They got tips to keep your so Super Bowl cookout from going up in flames. Hi, I'm Oliver Finney. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and I'm rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles. You are watching the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis. Can Bob come All over? right, welcome back, everybody. The sun is out. Doesn't feel like it, though. <laughs> We're out in the backyard here at our studios, and uh, we've got Robbie and Rob from Bear Creek Smokehouse with us today. And today they got some wonderful tailgating tips and ideas for us. Good morning, guys. How are we? Good morning. Here, We're a little here, chilly. Where's that weatherman? I need to talk to him about we, some more, we, a little more sunshine. Uh, right? We have a bone to pick with Andrew today. That's yes. what it is. Yes, me too. So we're going to be smoking up some Super Bowl favorites today. I've got bri uh, ribs on the pit back here. I've got brisket and sausage. sausage. Yeah. So, um, you know, those are things typically people love to tailgate with. We got our tailgate section set up back uh -huh. here. Uh, got the smoker going. We're all set for the game. We've been, but you know, we've been burning the midnight oil because brisket does take a while. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, so, I, I wanted to ask. I know it's a no-no, but can we open up and take yeah. a peek? Yeah. You know what I always say? <laughs> if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's right. Um, yeah. Let's take a look on there and see what it's looking like. Yeah. So this is uh, our brisket. This is some Bear Creek German sausage back here, and those ribs look like they are piping hot and ready to come off right now. Oh Lord, have mercy. Um, who who's gonna do? Might be my taste tester today. I oh. think we all know the answer. <laughs> I did self-appoint myself oh, to be there. Oh, wow. Let me get something off of there. Let me, I tell you what, let me grab a link. We'll put it up here uh, on the board. This is some German sausage that we do. And guys, we have um, a pit day every Saturday over at Bear Creek and Marshall, and it is absolutely fantastic. Okay, Judd. I'm, All right, I'm, I'm going not... for it. Reyna, you need to go, too. Oh, All right, that here looks we go. so good. 
Okay. Tell me what you think. So that's a sausage that we make. Uh, they're right at Bear Creek. We stuff it ourselves, grind it ourselves, everything. Mm. Oh Lord, serve it. It's so good. Serve uh -huh. it every weekend. Yeah, mm. I'm gonna take the whole pan with me, okay? <laughs> no, none for anybody it, else. It's a great product. <laughs> it's a great product. Um, it's so handy to have. You can serve it with fresh vegetables or whatever. You can put it on a hot dog bun and have sausage dogs for the big game. You know, just add a little relish and mustard, however you want to do it. I've got ribs too. Anybody, oh, anybody game for a rib? Oh, yes, I think we're pretty much game so for anything good, under yes. in that smoker. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let, me, let me grab a uh, rib off here. Okay, now this is where it's gonna get messy, guys. This is a St. Louis style rib. So I'm just gonna cut a couple off here. Looks like they're trying to fall off the bone. Ooh. I'm gonna let you guys, maybe I should hold them <laughs> up while you eat. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh Lord. <laughs> Not great okay. to have the white gloves on for this, huh, Raina? Oh my God, so good. Hot. Okay, Judge. Hot, All right, but good. Here we go. Can you handle it, brother? Yeah, I think I can handle it. All right, oh, oh, yeah. here we go. So um, I just wanted to show you real quick while Judge trying that rib. That's our brisket and rib rub Ooh. that we make over at Bear Creek. Ooh, that's we put good. that on our brisket and our ribs. What'd you think, bro? Oh, that was good. That was yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we use this, um, coat it down. It's a dry rub. Put it on the meat before we put it on the smoker, and turns out absolutely perfect <laughs> every time. Awesome. And what else um, can we have on our tables during well, the big game? Well, we've got brisket on here as well. Yeah. Um, do we want to pull that brisket off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me, we got a lot of meat we, we going on. We got to make on. sure it's all ready to go, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. You get already started with brisket, you're gonna be late for the game. Oh yeah. Well, I was gonna say, you know, why why we're pulling the brisket off? Um, what are some tips uh, okay. for first-time grillers out there today? So remember, the thing is, brisket is just a big, tough piece of meat. It's full of. Uh, fat, connective tissue, that sort of thing. The best thing to do for a brisket is cook it low and slow. Low and slow is key to all your barbecue meats that you're gonna cook. Mm -hmm. Because if you speed it up, try to rush it and go too fast, you just will make a pair of boots out of a oh, brisket, wow. okay? Yeah. Um, otherwise, it, it's gonna be tough. <laughs> so you gotta go low and slow, and it's gonna come out perfect every time. Oh, we like cooking this. at about 250 Cheers. degrees. And it just takes a while, Judd. You can't speed it up. Well, you know what I mean? Well, like you said, if you haven't done your brisket already, it's probably a little, is it a little late it, to be starting this morning? It's a little late morning? to try to get brisket ready by the game mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah. Oh, my word. We, we started last night. It's so good. I can't. It's so good, you guys. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, really quickly, we're going to go to break. Um, we're going to try to maybe see if we can get a couple more uh, hits with you this morning if we yeah. can't, but we appreciate y'all coming on this morning and bringing this food. Oh, I know yes. we're going to enjoy it. <laughs> Everybody bet. in the back is going to enjoy it too. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. All, All right. right. Well, coming up next this morning, the offenses will get most of the attention today as one quarterback will look to build on what we could or what could be an all-time great career while the other is just getting started. What to expect from Hertz and Mahomes. I'm Jonathan from Greifen Camp. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists at Longview Regional Medical Center and may the best team win.
Well, welcome back into Super Bowl Sunday. All week we've been gearing up for the big game. That is correct. Jordan Williams joins us once again on this big game day. Jordan, good morning. What is the atmosphere like? Good morning to both of you. The atmosphere along with the temperatures certainly starting to warm up. We're going to see temperatures in the 70s today, so can't complain on that front. And yeah, the atmosphere has been really building up all week long. We first saw fans really come into the Phoenix area last weekend when that Super Bowl fan experience first opened. So maybe some of the fans with a little bit of deeper pockets have been uh, in the Phoenix area all week long paying up uh, for those you know, more than usual hotel fees. And then we started to see some more fans trickle in this past weekend on Thursday and Friday. There have been lots of headlines ahead of the game and storylines to watch for today, but every Super Bowl seems to have that one guy who comes out of nowhere. Who could it be today? Yeah, so on the Eagles side, of course, you have all the star players. Well, both sides have those star players. But for the Eagles, we're going to look at Sky Moore, who's really been having kind of a quiet season. He's a, a rookie wide receiver, but he also can make an impact on the special team side of the ball as a kick returner. And then for the Chiefs, of course, they have a number of running backs that have been playing well all year long. Of course, uh, um, Edwards Hilaire is coming back from his injury, but the player to watch for them is Kenny Gainwell. He's more of a third down running back but can also make some plays uh, in the uh, check down option as well, catching some passes for more uh, short yards. So those are the two players you might want to keep an eye on. All right. Well, State Farm Stadium has a retractable roof. Will it be open or closed for kickoff today? So we're expecting it to be open. The last two times it's been here at State Farm Stadium, the roof has been open, of course, with temperatures in the 70s. It should be open as well. I think they're just kind of waiting to make sure that the weather will be fine before they confirm and make sure it's absolute uh, that they will have that roof open for today's game. All right. Well, Raina and I have already been talking about the ads during the game. Have you seen any celebrity sightings in Arizona rubbing elbows with the stars, <laughs> as it were? Yeah, a little bit. So Monday night, of course, we had an opening night. So if you consider them celebrities, I think they're celebrities. We got a closer look at Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, some of the stars of the game. There were some celebrities there. Uh, and then last night I was uh, fortunate enough to go to a Netflix little party in the Scottsdale area. Shaq was there, uh, Serena Williams, Brian Cox, an actor for an HBO show called Succession. So definitely the celebrities are starting to show out here in the Phoenix area. All right, Jordan, well, we appreciate you and all the hard work that you've put in, us, uh, put in for us this week. We wish you could be here to take part of the uh, tailgating festivities yes. that we've been having. Yes. We'll save a rib for you, <laughs> if, you if you can make it. All right, Super Bowl 57 kicks off in less than 10 hours, pitting the top seeds from both conferences. Fox 51's Garrett Sanders takes a look at what we could expect to go down on the field tonight. Super Bowl 57 is right around the corner. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes will be playing his third title game in four seasons, looking to add to what already appears to be a Hall of Fame legacy. What I'm chasing is I don't I never say I'm chasing a, a player. I'm chasing that I, I don't want to have any regrets when I step off this football field. But across the field will be a fellow quarterback from Texas, Jalen Hurts, who in just his third season has the field of the Eagles back in their first Super Bowl since 2018, a team that won both postseason matchups in blowout fashion. Blessed to be here, you know, blessed to be here. Definitely soaking all of this in. It's been a lot of hard work that I put in um, to be where we, you know, be where I am and be where we are. While the offenses will get most of the attention, both quarterbacks will have their heads on a swivel as the defenses tout the number one and number two units in producing sacks this season. Everybody knows that everything starts up front, and so it'll be a great challenge for our offensive line to try to do what they can in the run game and the pass game of protecting and run blocking. One quarterback will be looking to build on what could be an all-time great career while the other is just getting started. But either way, both of these Lone Star QBs expect to put on a show Sunday evening.
You know, just be who you've been this whole entire time. And I think both teams that have gotten to this point and you know, have done great things all year. So it'll be a bit of definite challenge for, for us. When I look back at the end of my career, I don't want to look back and be like, man, I didn't give everything I have to, to win to win Super Bowls because of the great people I have around me. And so uh, when I get done with my career, I just want to make sure that I, I know that I gave everything I had on that football field. The latest chapter of Super Bowl history will be written Sunday in Glendale, Arizona, as the world watches and a champion will be crowned. Okay, Here's well, we've Sam. got some more predictions for you from our Fox 51 team. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our sports guys and our chief meteorologist, Carson Vickroy. Yeah, there you go. Sports director Garrett Sanders, sports reporter David Gibson, and chief uh, meteorologist Carson Vickroy. Full sweep here for the Chiefs. So, uh, I tell you, it, it, that's boring. Come on. <laughs> you know, think of the Chiefs. You got to maybe try something else. The reporters and myself are all for the Eagles. Well, you, you spoiled go. it. Tori, now. Lauren. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> Tori, Lauren, and Ashlyn Anderson um, were all for the Eagles. So, we'll see who wins today. Jumping on board the Eagles bandwagon, right? <laughs> yep. That's why I'm wearing green. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it right here on Fox 51. We'll be right back with more of our East Texas Big Game tailgate special right after this. This is the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis Health Systems. Welcome back here in East Texas. The city of White House, home of Patrick Mahomes, is proud their hometown boy is playing tonight in the World Championship game. Fox 51's Avery Klonowski has more on this Mahomes mania. This Sunday, February 12th, will be Patrick Mahomes Day in White House, a proclamation by Mayor James Wainsley. The fans get to come together 
in the city and cheer on, you know, somebody that, that went, that was raised in our community, that graduated from our schools. White House ISD also celebrated their former Wildcat Friday. Students and staff wore their favorite gear. One student has an important message for his favorite player before his big game. You don't have to worry about the good players on the other team. Just worry about your team. The East Texas City could not be prouder of their star quarterback. If you look around town, you'll see a lot of windows painted, a lot of people wearing Chiefs gear, and uh, we're doing this because we're so proud of Patrick. In White House, you won't make it very far with seeing some sort of Mahomes decoration in support of their very own. We are just excited to see our hometown boy on Sunday. Mayor Wainsley says Patrick competing in Super Bowl 57 is the talk of the town. It just makes it more interesting, you know, that we have this relationship with somebody that's a star. Just being in his hometown, you can feel the excitement. Have his back, we're here supporting him, and he might not be able to hear us, but we're cheering loud. Avery Klanowski, Fox 51 News. Mahomes will not be the only East Texan playing in this year's Super Bowl. Philadelphia Eagles offensive tackle Lane Johnson will also be looking to win his second ring. Johnson, a Groveton native, is also played at Kilgore College, and since then he established himself as one of the best linemen in the NFL. After getting injured near the end of the regular season, he was back for the playoffs. Those who watched him play in East Texas say they are proud of Lane for making it to the big stage and excelling. Seeing what he's able, been able to do and how well he's been able to represent not only Groveton but you know his family and, and the things that he's accomplished has been amazing and um, you know we hope he just stays healthy and that he continues to progress and have fun. It's awesome for our kids. It, they dress in the same lockers. They play in the same field. They represent the Jesus same. And it's great to have a role model like him uh, that represents you know our town, our community. The East Texan will more than likely need surgery after his injury this season, but he'll wait to get that taken care of after playing in the Super Bowl. All right, well, coming up next on Fox 51, we're heading back outside with Bear Creek Smokehouse. They've got some good things on the grill for us. And a look at what they'll be serving up on their Super Bowl table.
You are watching the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis. Well, welcome back, everybody, out here with Bear Creek Smokehouse again. We've got Robbie and uh, Uncle Bob here cooking up some uh, good uh, meats for us this morning. Thank you all for sticking around, and thanks for waking up and being here with us. Yes. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. I will talk to this guy a little more about this weather, <laughs> though, you know. Well, it's improved a little bit since we were out here earlier. Yeah. I'll say that much. So uh, Andrew's going to work. We, we decided that we had let him out of the cage to come try some, try yes, some meat this morning. Yes, I want to try, try some try barbecue out here. Okay. Yeah, let's all right, try let's it. go. <laughs> Here you go, Uncle Bob. I'll let you slice that up for him. <laughs> How about a rib, today? Andrew? Do you want a rib? We'll try that? the rib. He needs yeah, all of we'll it. try. We'll he try everything. All of it. <laughs> Let's try everything. <laughs> I, we, we ain't holding back. <laughs> all right. I, tell you, I was eating that rib, running back into the studio to do that live shot. I wasn't letting go of it for anything. Oh, this meat is to die for. I wish you guys could smell it. Get those ribs out there. Um. You know, the deal is it's we good. we talked about the brisket and how you have to do it low and slow. You know, it's a process. It takes a while to get a brisket done. So if you were going to do a uh, brisket for the Super Bowl, probably should have been put on yesterday, oh, yeah, we're you know, ahead. and cook overnight. But there still is time, it, you know, if somebody wants to do ribs, um, you just get a dry rub, put it on the ribs and put them on. I, we do them at about 250 for roughly about four hours, something like that. And if you can see here on the rib, see how the meat has started pulling away from the bone right there? That's how you know those ribs are ready. Um, they start pulling back from the bone, shrinking up a little bit. We like to spray them with a little bit of apple juice and then hit them with just a little bit of brown sugar right before we serve them. So that gives it a, just a little bit of a sweet taste along with the smoke. Oh. I was going to say they're real sweet, the bite yeah. I yeah. yeah, apple juice. Hmm. Okay, so. Oh, and oh, look at that. And that's that was... the best, especially when it just falls oh, right off yes. and you don't got to work for it. Uh, okay, so like you said, you still got time to at least go out to the store and get some sausage and some ribs. Yeah. Uh, let's talk to me about these uh, rubs up here that y'all offer. Sure, you betcha. So um, this is a Bear Creek uh, brisket and rib rub. I'm just going to pour some out here so folks at home can see what it looks like. It's just a great blend that we came up with years ago, and it's what we use on all our ribs and brisket and everything we do there at the smokehouse and the pit room. So we serve up this great stuff every Saturday over at Bear Creek General Store. Oh, wow. And um, you guys will have to visit sometime. Oh, yes. It's a, it's a great place to come to. Judd, right down your alley. Uh, yeah, I was gonna, maybe next year we can come to y'all. Oh, yes. Yeah. That would be yeah. wonderful. We, we'd love to have y'all. Yes. Talk but, to us a little bit about, like, some side dishes that people can kind of put together to with, go along with the meat. With these, okay, so with the brisket, you know, you can just do chopped brisket sandwiches, mm -hmm. sliced brisket sandwiches, put some coleslaw, maybe some pickles on there, whatever Ooh, you want, yeah. your favorite, you know, dressing. Um, with the ribs, you know, it goes great with potatoes, green beans, whatever. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the German sausage, this, we have several kinds of sausage. We mm -hmm. have a Polish and we have a German, several others. The German sausage goes great to make sausage dogs. And, you know, if you've got a house full of kids, you can Ooh. feed a lot of kids with these sausage mm, dogs. In a hurry, I you know? bet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about your sauces over here as well. Oh, yeah. So I brought some sauces. We hadn't even got the sauce <laughs> out, but, you know, some people say sauce is just a distraction to good meat. Oh, yeah. Yes, I you agree with I you mean? there. Yes. Yeah. So, we brought um, our Bear Creek barbecue sauce over here, and I'm going to leave this all for you guys, too. So, look, y'all are going to have you're a piece. Look football, at you guys. Right? Yeah. You guys are yeah. so great. You're going to have brisket, you're going to have ribs, sausage, and you're going to have some Bear Creek barbecue sauce. And I'll leave the rub for you, too, so you guys can try it at home. Oh, well, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. This is an amazing spread that they've put together for us here, and we just can't get over the smell. It's, We're going to be amazing. fat and sassy before the Super Bowl even gets started. <laughs> there you go. At least you'll be inside, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we want some more information about Bear Creek Smokehouse, where can we go to get that? Well, you can get on the internet, look us up, BearCreekSmokehouse.com. Please follow us on Facebook. Yes. We've got over 50,000 followers, and they keep up with all the latest and greatest things that are happening over at Bear Creek. All righty. Well, thank you very much, you Robbie betcha. and Uncle Bob, for all of this. And coming up next on Fox 51 Good Day. It's time for the Puppy Bowl. Oh, we, yes. we had a little puppy in studio earlier this week that we're going to get to check out. Uh, we'll see who they selected to win the Super Bowl right after this. I'm Zach McDonald. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and I'm rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles.
You are watching the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis. Welcome back. We've all seen them. Cute animals at the zoo making predictions on who's going to win the Super Bowl. Well, we decided to get in on the action right here at Fox 51. And Judd had a special visitor from Pets for People who made her choice for tonight's game. Take, Take a, a look. look. All right, well, we want to do something a bit silly yeah. since the Super Bowl's happening. <laughs> We're going to see if little gal here uh, will be able to pick the winner of the Super Bowl. So we'll have the okay, uh, come on. <laughs> uh, the uh, Eagles here. We're going to have the Chiefs here. Okay. All right, so are you going to be able to pick Ew. an iPad here? Let's see if she'll do it all on her own. That is not... Oh. Gonna play well in East Texas, ma'am. <laughs> is, is this your final decision, or do you want to rethink it here? All right. It seems oh. it seems she's picking the Eagles. Uh, well, uh, you might not have made a lot of good friends in East Texas with that move, but it's okay. We all love you nonetheless. Well, the adorable furry teams of the Puppy Bowl return to the field today. This is the 19th edition. They will have 122 puppy participants playing. Puppy players who participate in the annual furry game event are adopted shelter dogs who represent 67 shelters from 34 states. Some of these adorable pups are he uh, hearing or vision impaired, while others are missing a uh, missing a left or have a cleft palate. Puppy Bowl referee Dan Schneider says they want to showcase a wide variety of puppies from across the country. The game will last three hours, including the kitty halftime show plus the red carpet event. Now let's check in with meteorologist Andrew Samet, who's back inside now with us. How was the food out, Andrew? How did you like it? Yeah, the, that food was really good uh, out there and uh, certainly I kind of want more. But taking a look at what we have right now uh, here in East Texas with clouds and radar, we've got some clouds, especially in northern parts of our area. So we are seeing some passing clouds, but also a good amount of sunshine uh, as well this morning. Temperature wise right now, we are sitting out in the low to middle 30s out there. We're already, we already have some upper 30s up towards the Sulphur Springs area. We've got 37 in Hemphill, 34 in, in Lufkin, and 32 right now in Nacogdoches. Now, if you're heading to church this morning, make sure to leave some extra time to get to your destination because there is likely to be frost out there with how chilly it was overnight. And we also have some patchy fog to work with, especially along Interstate 30 uh, in uh, Titus, Franklin, and Morris counties. Visibility is down to zero miles over in a two Mount Pleasant. Also some fog development as well into parts of central uh, Rust County. Visibility is down to zero miles in Henderson. So be on the lookout for that fog out there this morning. Another reason to leave some extra time uh, to get to your destination in case you do run into that fog. Winds right now are pretty light, so thankfully we don't have much of a wind chill out there because it's already cold enough. But by 9 o'clock this morning, we'll be into the Lower 40s out there with partly cloudy skies, upper 50s by noon with a mix of sun and clouds. And then by your 3 o'clock hour, uh, we will be in the lower 60s out there. So it is going to be a seasonal day uh, overall for us. Taking a closer look at the forecast during the Super Bowl for our day today. This is for here in East Texas. We'll be in the low 60s at 5 o'clock this evening. So it will be pretty comfortable out there. If you want to do any outdoor barbecuing before uh, the game begins, definitely a perfect day to do so because we are going to be dry and pretty uh, comfortable temperature wise for this time of year. We'll be down to the 50s as we head throughout to the evening hours. So as you head home from your Super Bowl parties, we do look to have a dry uh, commute out there. So uh, in terms of the weather concerns, definitely no problems on the highways, but still uh, certainly be careful out there. Now taking a look ahead into Wednesday, we are going to be tracking a risk of some strong to severe thunderstorms. So we're going to have to transition to a more uh, severe weather awareness over the next couple of days here. We'll definitely have more details as we get closer uh, to the um, as we get closer to the day on our Wednesday. So we are going to see that severe weather threat. We'll definitely have more details for you coming up uh, throughout the week. So Wednesday is the day to make sure to stay weather aware. Alrighty, Andrew, thank you. Well, guess what? It's now time for a little fun. We've got some trivia questions to answer that are Super Bowl related. First up, what are two teams are in the Super Bowl this year? Andrew? All right. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, the Chiefs mm -hmm. and the Eagles. Oh, there you go. All right. 
Okay, up <laughs> next, we have talked it about a lot today for Raina. Where is the Super Bowl being played? Glendale, Arizona. You got that too fast. <laughs> Very good. Fair. And we're going to go a little historical this time, Judd and Raina, see if you guys can answer this. Uh, who won the first ever Super Bowl? Ooh. You know? Uh, I'm just going to say the Cowboys for dedication. Okay, that's Judd. Raina. Oh, uh, gosh. I'm just going to pick the Broncos. I have really no idea. It was the Green Bay Packers. Oh, oh no. the Packers. Wow. Okay, and we're going to end on a little harder question. Andrew and Judd, this is both for you. Which team are teams have the most Super Bowl wins? Which ones have the most Super Bowl wins? Out of the current ones playing today or all time? All time. All time, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to go with the Patriots. Patriots it is. Oh, Brady. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh and the Steelers. And the Steelers, apparently, okay, yes. Okay, six and six. All right, well. <laughs> All well, coming up next on Fox 51 here at the Tailgate Special, we will have more food coming up for you next. Welcome back. We're having a little fun here in our newsroom. We asked a few of our co-workers to make some of their favorite tailgate dips. So uh, we're going to give them a try yes. now this morning. So let's see. First up, we've got um, our production manager, Cole's Stepmom's Game Day Dip to try. Uh, which so is this, it this is one? it this corner one? Okay. The corner one, yes. Okay, All right, okay. let's it's go this in. One right Cole, here. Cole, tell me in my ear what chip is best for this. <laughs> a corn, corn chip. chip. All right. All right, <laughs> dig in. Uh, okay. All right. This is high, very intense. We uh -huh. need some like background music for this. <laughs> oh, I didn't even. Oh, there's more below. I didn't even this get is, whatever's oh, it's below. It's so melty. You gotta, okay, get, the you gotta get the cream cheese. cheese. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why are you singling me out? <laughs> <laughs> so Definitely good. can't go wrong with that. That's a good one. Mm. Okay. That's good. What's all in that, Cole? Cream cheese, chili, and regular cheese. Okay. Oh wow, that was divine. That's good. That's it good. Sounds simple. Yeah. Now right. we've got um, 
the dairy free spinach yeah. artichoke goodness dip right here. On the and that's from our producer Sarah who made this. And so we're gonna give this a try. I'm excited. Which chip should we use? I'm going I'm going with this. Is that right, Sarah? This one? Okay. No, All right. This, so I'm gonna All right, dig in there, guys. After you. After you. <laughs> Also, you should let us know what your favorite dips are uh, on our social media handles, and yeah. we will have to try to make them. Drop some the recipes, guys. Let us know. Oh my gosh, mm. that's good. I do love the spinach <laughs> that's artichoke. That's really good. It tastes mm -mm. refreshing. Mm -mm. That's yes. one. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Oh yes, fresh. It is. Yeah, and it's really light too. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's not like a heavy dip. True. All right. All right. Really quickly, we have about a minute left. We have the out of this world corn dip that our KETK on our sister station, uh, KETK, our producer there, Hannah made. Uh, she's in studio with us this morning. <laughs> uh, Hannah, is there a, a specific chip or do we just go for it? I tried it with corn chip. Okay. Just try I'm with gonna, the I'm regular gonna go corn here. chip. Oh, this no. looks good. <laughs> I'm covering my mic, mm. I feel so rude. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mm hmm. Mm. Fantastic. Oh, it's good too. This Ryan, is a can we get a closer look? Look at like, all of this. It's good too. The corn really makes it. The artichoke Because it's like here. the extra softer crunch. Do we have to declare a winner? Because I, dec I decree all of these winners. I know. They're, yeah, all they're all too different. Good. They're all different. So We're going to be dipping into these as really soon good. as we are done this morning. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're getting this, which means it's time to go. So we'll be right back with more right after this. Hi, I'm Nicholas Bamberg. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and I'm rooting for the Eagles.
You are watching the East Texas Big Game Tailgate on Fox 51, sponsored by Christus Trinity Mother Francis. Welcome back. One of the most anticipated parts of the Super Bowl is the halftime show, and this year it's pop star Rihanna. The last time she released an album was 2016. In fact, the last time anyone saw Rihanna perform on a big scale was the Grammys back in 2018. She released seven albums in almost a decade, setting the record for the fastest solo artist to rack up 10 number one one singles only the Beatles did it quicker it feels like it could have only been now yeah um, I mean when I first got the call to do it again this year it, it I was like <laughs> you sure like I'm, I'm I'm three months postpartum like should I be making major decisions like this right <laughs> now like I might regret this but it when you become a mom, there's something that just happens where you feel like you could take on the world, you can do anything, and the Super Bowl is one of the biggest stages in the world. So as scary as that was, because I haven't been on stage in seven years, mm -hmm. there's something exhilarating about the challenge of it all. And it's important for, for me to do this this year. It's important for representation. It's important for my son to see that. Now she adds the hardest part was deciding how to maximize the 13 minutes she's given for the halftime show. I think I actually read somewhere that she uh, like changed her set list like 30 times. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure it takes a lot of detail to put something like that together. I mean, what? I, I couldn't <laughs> even imagine what it takes to put in a halftime show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they go really quickly to set up the stage and then, of course, you know, to take it down. Um, yeah, so What's that'll be interesting. I think my favorite halftime show experience that I got to enjoy was the Jennifer Lopez and Shakira performance, right. um, 2020. So, yeah, how about you? To go with the, the SpongeBob one again. Like yeah, back in 2019. Because mm -hmm. what could be bad about SpongeBob? Or Katy Perry, wasn't she like in 2016? Did she have the dancing sharks? Oh, yes. wow. Oh, that yeah. Was, yeah <laughs> most people remember from. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Okay. Well, we've got a special lineup prepared for you for your Super Bowl Sunday right here on Fox 51. Fox Sports coverage starts at 11, and the pregame pre -game show starts at noon. Kickoff to the big game set for 530. Again, only right here on Fox 51. Alrighty, And don't forget, you can also live stream the big game for free. That's right for free. Scan the code right there on your screen right now to make sure the app is ready to go this Sunday by using the Fox Now app. You will be able to watch the entire game and the halftime show at no cost. Again, kickoff is scheduled for 5.30. And here are Super Bowl predictions. Uh, uh, you know, Raina's the odd woman out here. Woo! Go Eagles. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta root for the Texan, Patrick Mahomes. Well, okay, yeah, you, you know, we do yeah, have another Lane Texan. Johnson. So, uh, I'm gonna say because Mahomes went to Tech, and that's near my hometown. So. <laughs> All right, there you go. Right. Chiefs, because I don't know. Maybe. All right, we'll see what happens tonight. Thank you for joining us this morning. Have a wonderful Super Bowl Sunday.